Hello gentlemen, this is Shoman from Oil and Gas Field Quality Control. I came with a pure and important subject for pipeline today. We will discuss everything about the tie-in and temperature tie-in for pipeline. How much you know about temperature tie-in, adequate anchorage. What is pipeline tie-in joint? Before we go for temperature tie-in, first let us know what is tie-in joint. Generally, a pipeline tie-in joint is a connection point where a new pipeline section is welded or mechanically connected to an existing pipeline system. Tie-in joint is also the last weld or connection made to link a new pipeline segment or segments or spools into the main line. It is often the final step in the pipeline construction, modification or repair. But I have also a different practical idea. Not always uh, tie-in is the last connection. Tie-in can be tying in two spools also together. I mean few pipeline joints, let's say 10 pipeline pipes are connected one side and another 10 pipes on the other side or few kilometers one side or few pipes one side. These are also tie-in joint. But whenever tie-in comes, you know, it, it coming with some difficulties, some restraint, we will discuss today in detail. Types of tie-in, field tie-in, made in the field on site to connect two pipeline segments, what I am discussing, both are new sections, but two pipeline segments are connected together. Hot tie-in is done when existing line already in service and then we are connecting a new segment with that which is pressurized and flowing. So in this case existing line is already pressurized and flowing. We can sometimes tell it is as a hot tapping also. I have different videos for hot tapping if you want to know in detail. Cold tying done when the pipeline is existing but it is depressurized and isolated. Mechanical tying uses flanges or coupling. No, no need any welding. So it is little bit less hazardous or easier. It is generally this time happens on above ground or temporary lines. Why and where do we need to do the tie-in joint? Pipeline construction when connecting prefabricated sections, pipeline extension when we adding new facilities like new valve station, metering station being added to the pipeline, pipeline repair or rerouting or during replacement or modification some sections or some damaged portion from the pipeline. Important things to consider for tie-in joints. First of all is alignment. Pipeline must align precisely to avoid stress and bad wells. Temperature difference. We always need to take care of the thermal expansion or contraction especially for long pipelines. So that is basically our subject today. I will discuss in detail in next few slides. Welding procedure WPS must follow the approved code, design code or qualification code API 1104, ASME B31.4 or 31.8. Using the best welder, any repair in the tie-in joints are not you know advisable. So welder should be repair free or the selected best welders for the from the project. Inspection and NDT, all tie-in joints require 100% inspection. RT, UT, MPI, etc. Time sensitive, often done in tight shutdown windows. Example, if we take a new 16 inch crude line is installed. To connect it to the main trunk line, two tie in joints are made at the each end of a new spool. The operation is carefully planned to match the pipe temperature, ensure alignment, and pass welding and inspection. So the conclusion we can say pipeline tie-in joint is the connection between a new and existing pipeline or new to new typically welded in the field. It is critical for completing pipeline systems ensuring continuity and must be executed with strict technical control for safety, quality and reliability. What is pipeline temperature time? This is our subject for today. Pipeline temperature tie-in joints refer to special joints used during tie-in process that are designed to accommodate thermal expansion or contraction resulting from the temperature differences between the installed pipe and operating conditions. 
some sentence about the temperature time. I got it from the local standard. The pipeline segment between tie-in points remains fully restrained at the tie-in temperature, provided that the thermal expansion or contraction is prevented by sufficient anchorage at both ends. Here few words might not be familiar with you. Let us explain. The fully restrained, what does it mean? That the pipeline, the segments we are talking about being in the, under the tie-in cannot expand or contract freely due to external constraint or restrictions like both ends there are anchors or backfill sections or longer sections. Tie-in temperature refers to the temperature at what the pipeline was connected or installed. Expansion of shrinkage means thermal expansion of shrinkage, temperature changes after installation. Adequate anchorage means it ensures that the movement are prevented. So temperature tines are only those joints which cannot move after the welding has been done. So all the pressures are coming on the welded joint. That's why it is very important to take care a lot of things during construction. Now let us discuss in detail about some adequate anchorage, some practical facts and figures from the local standard. In Gulf countries, pipelines are being laid through hot desert where temperature is taking crucial role in expansion and contraction of the line pipe. An anchor on the end of the pipeline upstream of the welding progression along with friction forces on the tail. Number two, at least 450 meter of buried pipeline downstream of the tie-in weld. A 900 to 1200 meter pipeline string on wooden skid or sand or an 1800 meter to 2400 meter pipeline string resting on the steel supports. So the last one is for the above ground restrained pipeline and the third one is for the underground restrained pipeline. Here are some photos for the anchorage taken from sites and internet. What is restrained welding? That means when we are welding a temperature time, what happens to the weld joint? In pipeline construction, a temperature time with restricted welding refers to the joining or welding of a new pipeline section to an existing one, where the pipeline is physically restrained or restricted from moving and temperature effects, that means thermal expansion or contraction, are critical factors that must be accounted for. What is a restrained welding then? Restrained welding occurs when the pipeline cannot expand, contract or move freely during welding due to clamps, trench backfill, anchor or weight. I just discussed you know with the facts that how much backfill will give you adequate anchorage, anchors will give you adequate anchorage. The welding joint is under stress that means all the temperature tie-in joint is under thermal or mechanical stress during fit up or welding. Tie-in procedure shall be such that it can help to relieve stresses caused by the thermal expansion or contraction, align pipeline properly before final welding, ensure the dimensional accuracy at tie-in points and prevent buckling of high axial stress. How to handle temperature tie-in welds? Before we go to site, we have some paperwork or some brain work to do. First, pre-tie-in analysis. Engineering team calculate the thermal expansion or contraction based on the pipe length and material using coefficients of thermal expansion. Cold pull or hot push might be required depending on the ambient or operating temperature, provided your client is allowing this. Gap management. A calculated tie-in gap is left to allow the movement during welding. Sometimes hydraulic jack or chain pulls are used to align pipe ends at the correct temperature. Timing. Tie-in are often scheduled during times of the day when ambient temperature are closest to the operating temperature to minimize the stress or hottest part of the day. It is not mandatory but uh, this is very good to do that. Inspection and QAQC, NDT and dimensional checks, there are some special requirement we need to perform this. Before performing a temperature tie-in well, the construction engineer shall determine the highest practical tie-in temperature for each tie-in well. 
the time temperature shall be within the range stated in the project specifications. For above ground restraint pipelines, the final welds shall be made at or above the mean pipe temperature for the three days prior to final time. This mean temperature shall be recorded as the actual time temperature for the pipeline. So this is a job for the welding foreman or the in charge who is responsible for this stein welding fit up so what he does every three or four days before the time let's say we will do 10 a.m in the morning that time so every day around 9 30 or 10 a.m he will go to site and he will mark at both end of the pipeline he will mark a point 10 o'clock he will go again and he will check how much expansion has been happened 10 o'clock he will see the position of two pipeline he will mark and then he will cut accordingly. So if he cut from there, morning it will be short, but gradually in when the ambient temperature is increasing, 10 o'clock it will come face to face and immediately he will start the fit up and welding. So face to be prepared before the welding day, one day on the fit, so that when he will come, he will make some kind of small bevel preparation, final preparation and welding can be done before the pipe again contracts back or create a stress tensile or compressive stress over the joint. The contractor shall do the survey and fit up, measure, cut and align the pipe ends precisely, leave a gap if required for thermal movement as I just mentioned. As a standard practice, the welding foreman generally observes the expansion of the pipe at the tying location three days continuously around the expected time of a tying weld to be performed. Preparation, clean B welds, remove or rust or paint, align the clamps or jacks. Welding, perform root pass and field passes as per welding procedure specification, need skilled welder to make a weld defect free weld as uneven gap or misalignment is expected due to the manual B weld preparation. This is very important. Inspection and NDT use RT, UT, magnetic particle, visual inspection and verify weld quality. For final golden joints where hydro test is not possible, that will be called a waiver joint, NDT waiver joint. That joint if it is approved by the client, we have to do maybe the radiography with slow speed stream with better resolution. There is no chance of skipping any defect. PAUT, TOFT also can be mandated by the client as an extra quality verification or requirement. Coating and wrapping, apply anti-corrosion coating over the welded area. Backfilling, if underground, after approval, the area is backfilled and compacted. Control why it is important in temperature time. What the condition pipeline is restricted. So why it matters? No flexibility for the movement. Welding joint will be under stress and temperature difference it causes thermal stress or misalignment hot pipeline versus cold time spool no shutdown available existing pipeline always stays live or hot requiring hot time in case this is only special case if we are doing with the existing time but basically i am talking about the temperature time for both new sections both ends are having adequate anchorage this you can say one of the last weld of the new pipeline before hydro test. Thermal stress needs control. Prevent overstressing weld due to pipe expansion and contraction. Must prevent cracks, hard spots or high residual stress in the weld zone. Feet up should be tight. Expansion and contraction may affect the weld gap alignment. It can contract more. It can it can uh, expand more so fit up and joint is easier and more stable if done under controlled temperature conditions stress analysis is required each pipeline integrity before during and after time shall be measured by the pipeline engineer construction engineer prevent long term issues such as buckling excessive stress at weld or pipeline movement after burial construction might manage to backfill the pipeline with additional support making the pipe very high in case this temperature time is not welded properly um, then uh, it can create create these problems later on buckling excessive stress on the weld which may result to some rupture or some kind of crack that's all for the temperature time 
video today if you have any question please mark in the remark box i will try to reply practically if you see one joint then it will be very clear for you how actually it is being done this was a request from one of my viewer from my channel i tried my best to explain everything to be considered during temperature time for the pipeline if you are interested with this type of subject please share my channel to your friend don't forget to hit the like button signing off for today chauman